Coming up on Doctype, it's time to tear down that cheesy MySpace wallpaper and get back in the game with CSS3 backgrounds. Then, if you liked last week's episode, then you're going to like this week's episode equally. Jim takes a look at more regular expressions. So get ready to take the red pill, because it's time for Doctype. This episode of Doctype is brought to you by Access Conference and GoDaddy. I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jim Hoskins. And you're watching Doctype. Whether you're a designer that thinks JavaScript is a decaf latte, or a developer who can't tell us Martin from his padding, Doctype has the latest tips, tricks, and tools to help make you the emperor of the interwebs. All right, so this week, Firefox came out with the beta of Firefox 4. I got to download it, it's a lot faster, I think. That's really my biggest you know, concern with browsers is how fast it is. Because once I switched to Chrome, it was like, everything else in the world is so slow, why can't it go? And so all the browsers are getting a lot faster. Um, Opera 1060 I had to download, which came out a couple weeks ago. Right. Super fast, and Firefox is just a lot snappier than it was in 3, at least. Definitely. Yeah, I, I really like the startup times are really yeah. vastly improved in Firefox 4 Beta 1. And They've also done some really nice tweaks to the interface in Windows, and they are going to bring those over to the Mac really soon. Anyway, this week I'm going to be talking about backgrounds in CSS3. And we're going to be taking a deeper look into regular expressions in JavaScript. Oh my. Let's check it out. CSS3 brings a bunch of new properties that allow you to fine tune your backgrounds. Perhaps the coolest thing is that you can now have multiple backgrounds. In order to apply multiple backgrounds to a page element, you simply use the background property like you normally would. After you've typed out your first background, you can then add a comma and type out the arguments for a second background. Using a comma-separated list of backgrounds, you can build up several layers of imagery. The first background in the list will be at the top of the stack in the foreground, and the second layer will be rendered behind it, and so on. If you're using the individual properties instead of the consolidated background property, you need to pay attention to the order of your arguments. For example, let's say you used the property background image and had a comma-separated list of values for multiple backgrounds. Then you used the background repeat property and had a comma-separated list of repeat values. The first background image value corresponds to the first background repeat value and the second background image value corresponds to the second background repeat value, and so on. If you have any extra values at the end that don't have a corresponding set of values, they will be ignored. One example usage where multiple backgrounds are really useful is if you want to have one background be repeated and another background that's centered on the page. To do this without multiple backgrounds, you would need to create two separate divs nested inside one another. Multiple backgrounds are pretty useful, but there's another CSS3 property that allows you to resize your backgrounds independent of the element that they're being applied to. The background size property allows you to scale backgrounds just like you would a normal image. The first argument determines the width of the background, and the second argument determines the height. If no value is specified, background size uses the default value of auto, which is how backgrounds normally behave in CSS 1 and 2. If pixel values are given for the x and y arguments, then the background will be constrained to that exact size. If percentage values are given, then the background will fill a certain percentage of the element. For example, background size 100%, 100%, would stretch out a background to be the exact same width and height of the element. Another neat thing about background sizing is that instead of using x and y values, you can just use the constants cover or contain. Both constants will preserve the original aspect ratio of the image. When you use cover, the background image will fill up the background of the element, even if that means some of the image is clipped off. If you use contain, the image will be scaled down so that it can be as large as possible while still being completely contained inside the edges of the element. When we come back, Jim is going to show you even more cool stuff you can do with regular expressions. 
It can be tough keeping up with all the latest in the development world when you're working like crazy. That's why you need to check out Axe as Conference 2010, a conference in Orlando, Florida, dedicated to helping you learn new stuff and improve your craft. From October 28th through 30th, you'll learn the latest techniques and tips for being an agile Ruby on Rails developer with hands-on workshops, sessions, open spaces, lightning talks, and more. For the past two years, this conference has sold out, so go to accessconference.com today, enter the code DOCTYPE, and get 15% off. We hope to see you there. Last week, we introduced regular expressions in JavaScript. This week, we're going to take a look at some more things you can do with regular expressions. If you want to match one out of a group of sequences, the pipe operator allows you to do this. The pipe acts like an OR, and when placed between two or more sequences, means that the expression should match any one of the given sequences. For instance, the expression cat, pipe, dog, pipe, fish will match cat, dog, or fish. The sequence that is matched will be the full sequence and not just a part. So cat will match, but the string at will not, because it has to be the full C-A-T or D-O-G, and not just a part of any one of the sequences. When used in this way, it's essentially testing completely different patterns, but you can use parentheses to apply pipe choices to a part of a pattern. For example, this expression, grand, and in parentheses, son, pipe, daughter, and then an ask question mark will match grandson, granddaughter, grandsons, or granddaughters. The ask question mark allows us to match the singular or plural forms. Besides grouping piped options, the parentheses allow us to do things like using the question mark, asterisk, or the plus on a sequence of characters instead of just one character. For instance, this expression BA and in parentheses NA and outside of the parentheses a plus will match BANA, BANANA, or BANANA, and so on. The parentheses do more than just logically group together character sequences. They also capture subsequences that will be returned from the match method. When we call match with a simple pattern like red, if the string matches, it'll return an array with a single string element, red. That is the substring of the test string that matches the whole regular expression. If our expression contains parentheses, the substrings matched by those subexpressions will also be returned in that array. So if we had our grandson granddaughter expression and tested it on the string grandson, index zero of our returned array would be grandson, the full expression match. But index one would be son, since son was captured inside of the parentheses. If your expression has a lot of parentheses, a lot of subsequences may be captured and returned. And it might be confusing as to which parentheses will be captured into which index of the returned array. This is especially confusing when parentheses are nested. The easiest way to tell is to look at the expression and begin numbering your opening parentheses. The first open parentheses will be number one, and the sequence that it captures will be in index number one. The next open parentheses, regardless of whether or not it's nested, will be in index two, and so on. If a capture subsequence is optional, for instance, it's modified by a question mark or a star, and the string that it's testing doesn't contain that substring, the data in the array for that capture sequence will be undefined, so as to not change the location of subsequent captures. There are lots of different ways to test regular expressions while you're building them. For instance, you could test them in your Firebug or Developers Console, which would allow you to inspect the return values of your matches. There are also sites that give you an interface for testing regular expressions, and one of my favorites is regex, which is at R-E-J-E-X, .heroku.com. If you have a favorite tool for testing regular expressions, let us know in the comments at doctype.tv. Listen, you need a domain name. You know it, I know it, but where are you gonna go get it? GoDaddy, that's where. If you're looking to drive viewers to your video content, then .tv domains are where it's at. .tv domains are perfect for podcasters, video bloggers, and anyone with something to say. And they're available now at GoDaddy.com. Heck, where do you think we got Doctype.tv from? So, we know you all get your domains from GoDaddy, but whose code are you gonna use? Enter the code DOCTYPE3 when you check out and save an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions apply, see site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com. That's it for this week. Until next time, be sure to check us out at facebook.com slash doctype and follow at doctype TV on Twitter. And if you have a question you'd like answered on a future episode of Doctype, send us an email at questions at doctype.tv. 
And if you subscribe via iTunes or RSS, you'll never miss an episode of Doctype. So come on, why not? So until next Tuesday, remember that every great webpage starts with Doctype.